celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex, it's me, it's your old pal Al, and we'll be here until midnight. We won't be here till midnight though with this broad. Wait, wait, what, 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 what happened? I didn't check the camera or anything, and now it's too dark. Don't and blame me, I didn't touch anything. I know you didn't touch anything, but I did, I guess. I don't know. I, I, you just, oh, this is ridiculous. I'll uh, come sit next to you. No, don't come sit next to me. Why not? I'm getting this the way it should be. Hold on. I'm holding. Here we go. There, there we go, that's more of you. That's more of you. There we go. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Friday. Pop, 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 okay, pop, now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to show everybody what I was doing. I had to get you. Uh, it's, you're, too, you're too high in the frame. Oh, well. That's okay. Wait a minute. Let me, let me f figure out some other pictures here. F fix some stuff uh, so that you look better. All right? I'm tired. Uh, why, why, why do I wait until I go on the air to do this? Okay, let me see here. There we go. A little more brightness, a little more brightness, a little more brightness. There we go. Apply. Uh -huh. Focus. Got to turn the focus on. There we go. And we got to zoom in just a little bit on you. Okay. There we sit straight up. See what, what we got here. I got my pillows. Huh? I have my pillows. And then we get to go, we tilt you down. Whoop. There, you there go. we go. See, I should have done all this before I did the show, but then I'd have to ask her to come in and do it, and she doesn't like doing it. So. That's true. That's true. But yeah. it's ten oh eight, so the more you can take and fixing it, that's fine with me. Is that all right with you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, uh, hello. Hello. I'm sorry, folks. To, I, I always I'm, these days I'm forgetting to do something. <laughs> you know. So, it's a dementia setting. You know what I've been doing today? Tell me, what have you been doing today, Alex? Uh, get a little closer to the microphone because I don't want all that Tell me. air conditioning noise. Tell me everything. Um, what happened was, uh, we use a thing, we use an encoder. You know what an encoder is? No. Okay. Well, but we, I don't want to know. Let me just explain this. <laughs> this is a very, this is, you should know this. Why? Because I might drop dead and then you'll have to do it. No, that, you, that's the right. end. No, but I there, we have. So a if thing, he drops dead, I'm going back to basic cable. We have a program called <laughs> an encoder, and what it does is it takes my audio. See that little thing up there at the very top on your on this one you're looking at up in the left hand corner. Nice cast. Yeah, yeah that scene was just that's on there. That's the encoder. Ah, that's the encoder, and what the encoder does is we take the sound from here, and then we feed it into there, and then that goes out there. Sends it. No, sends it to our to the server that has our uh, uh, that carries our signal out to the internet. There we go. So, uh, the company that makes that uh, I've used Nicecast now for about five years. They called Rogue Amoeba. And, Rogue Amoeba. Yeah, and it's a it's a good little company. It, they, they deal basically in just stuff for the Mac, and uh, Nicecast is maybe the best program ever for encoding a show and sending it out. So about, I don't know, three or four months ago, we I get a thing and it says, we're discontinuing NiceCast. Oh. Now what that means is it'll still work for the time being, but we're not gonna upgrade it. So like when a new uh, version of Apple's operating system comes out, that might not be completely compatible with NiceCast, uh, you're, you're up shit's Well, what great. do they have in its place? Well, there's a program I bought that they had that I've been using just to back up this program. And uh, they said, start using that. We've added a component to it so you can send it out to your, you, you, it'll work as an encoder. 
So I've been testing that all day. And? And it works pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty good little program. Good. But Is it called Nice Cast? No. What's it called? It, it's called uh, Audio Hijack. So we'll be up there in, in its place? It'll eventually be up there in its place. And I had, and Damien was the first one to try it tonight because I told him online how to turn it off. So he wouldn't be surprised when he saw it. Now, I, it's not up there now. The reason it's not up there is Jack is the next one that's going to have to use it. And I, it, it, to say, hey, you just turn off the button on the bottom on the left. Okay. Well, he's challenged. Right? And, yeah, he's challenged, and that would be too much. So uh, un until I finally go to this thing all the time, I'll have him live with it. But anyway, that's, what, prepared, I, that's what I've been doing all day, trying to configure that Ah. and get it to work. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. I left my watch home today. It was really weird, like... Okay, so I knew that I left it home because I did find my yeah. watch. Now, so this is your Apple Watch. My Apple Watch. So we came home, and what did you do? A ping? Yeah, you, you, for some reason, we couldn't find it anywhere. Right. So but we, I went knew it to find, we went to find my phone, and there's one there for your it's, Apple Watch. It's a sound. So we pinged it, and it starts pinging, and she starts looking all over for it. It's under the bed. It slipped out of my hand this yeah, morning. Uh, it was under the bed. Uh, so I'm glad that I didn't go looking for it. Yeah, you would have never found it. Because but you I would have never found it, then you would have panicked. Could oh, I you lost have pinged my watch. it? No, I couldn't ping you it. You couldn't. You ping have it. to ping it from your phone. You could have pinged it from my that. From the iPad. Yeah. Uh, or the old phone. Yeah, uh, I think it works through. Does it work through the Wi-Fi? Or does it work through the internet? Why? It, it may work through. Oh, uh, who, knows? who knows? Who mm. knows? But. Uh, it's going to be a hot one this weekend. It's going to go up to 100 on don't Sunday. Even, don't even say that. And feel like 105. Don't, don't even say that because I'm like my friend uh, Jack Bishop uh, is right now. It was last night, I think, when he was doing his show, it was like 85 degrees. And that was at night in Texas. I mean, they're hitting those temperatures and, and they're not adding into it the the uh, heat, some kind of heat factor. Or and whatever. our fucking president says climate change doesn't exist. Well, that has nothing to do with climate change. Oh, uh, well, sure. Uh, no, Things are no. getting hotter. And, and no, 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 no. Yes, it is. No, 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 no. You don't understand glo global warming. It's a whole different set of factors. I mean, when it gets really cold, that's part of global warming. Too. Right. It has, but a heat wave, hell, I mean, I remember living in New York during heat waves of 105 degrees, you know. Uh, I, always, I always felt that, uh, you know the song Summer in the City, you remember that song? Uh -huh, summer in the City. And it starts city. out with that, da, 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 um, Summer no, in the no, City. No, no, hold on a second. Da, da, no, no, Summer that, in no, the City. No, yeah, yeah, I know, but it starts out, da, da, um, Summer in the da, City. Da, um, da, and that sound, is what it feels like in New York when it's 105 well, degrees. Well, because the heat, the buildings retain it the heat. It radiates off the, yeah. off the, off the, off the And the tar roads <laughs> don't exactly help. It, yeah, but the, it was just, dun, dun, and I always oh. said that that hot damn summer in the city. Today, today there was a funeral for a fallen fireman. So all of Fifth Avenue from 59th all the way down to like 34th was closed off. And, you know, with the bagpipes and everything. And also Trump was coming into the city. So you couldn't go. No, he wasn't coming into the city. He's coming in tonight. Is he coming in tonight? Yes. Uh oh, because he's. Barricades up and everything. Because he's out in New Jersey. Well, yeah, he's going to play golf out there. Yeah. But he went, uh, for I guess, for the holiday out to New Jersey. Oh, God. So he's coming into Manhattan? Well, they're getting ready for it. Barricades are You know, up. for a guy who didn't want to leave Manhattan, he had, really hasn't been back here much. No. But it's been costing us as much as if he were here. Yeah, because of threats to Trump building. Mm-hmm. I wish it would explode it. So anyway, I bought we bought our I bought my new phone right near Trump Tower. Well Well. Kinda close. If I walked two blocks or three blocks, I'd be at Trump true. Tower. Yeah. You know. Excuse me. you're yawning. No, I'm tired. You're tired? You're and I have to tired. get up I have to get up at five fifteen tomorrow. Why? 
because I have to go to Starbucks and then the gym. I'm taking two classes and then I'm having breakfast with Natalia. I don't take any classes at all and I work out. If yeah, you don't work out for three hours. You know, I don't want to, <laughs> who wants to work out for I three hours? I love it, hours? I love the classes. I, today I worked out for about an hour. I did an hour. Whatever. I did, uh, I, did, uh, I did 40 minutes on the bike, which I don't normally do. You only did it because what's his name did it the other no, night? No, no, no. Yes, he, 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 he wasn't on a, a exercise cycle. He was on a re real bike that you get on in the gym. Yeah, that's what yeah. we have. Yeah, uh, it's like a real bike. Yeah. With wheels in it. Yeah, doesn't yeah. yours have wheels? Yeah. Oh, no. Mine's one of these things where you just, you know, you, it's got the pedals. And but no wheels? No, it's uh, but it's got a whole bunch. It's got computer in front of you telling you how much time you've spent and what how many oh, miles ours is, you've ours gone. Ours is hard. Plus the fact, one of the spin classes they put this graph up on the wall. Yeah. And you see your bike. Let's say my bike. By is the way, this is this is a first for us in our marriage. Me, us talking about our gym experiences. When when did I ever in our marriage go to the gym? I don't recall. Oh, I think I got you three memberships at three different places, and I even bought you clothes. And I, one time, I bought you lessons. You, you, <laughs> you got me a membership where the one downstairs from Sirius. Yeah, well, that one I that one I paid for myself. I got you the clothes, and I no, but I got that, and I the and thing, you went once. See, are you wanna, they love people like I want to show you folks. They hate people like no, me. I, I want to show you how lazy I am. Okay. I went to that gym. The gym was, and it was not cheap. It was I like. I went there for my, my physical therapy like when I broke my arm. $500 a year or something. I mean, it's big, expensive. That's not expensive. Not in comparison to the money you spend. That's nothing, hey, Alex. $500 hey, a year. I'm paying $15 a month. Yeah, but that's that's your bare bones. What do you gym. mean? It's a, what do you mean it's a bare bones gym? It's got all the implements of torture there and everything. <laughs> And and if you want a trainer, you can hire a trainer. Yeah, no, it's got everything, really. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'll take it. you over there. I have no I'm allowed to, to bring a guest. I've been allowed to bring guests to mine many yeah. times. Anyway, so I I um, what was I going to say? Take a spin oh, class. Oh, oh, so me. so no. The reason why I didn't use this gym, it was in New York. Sports. Sports, whatever. I'm racket, or something like is that. Is they gave me a. Um, a locker that was down and it was on the floor yeah well like, and i didn't like having to lean down to get my stuff you couldn't so get back up if it were up at eye level i think i would have gone more <laughs> often that's how lazy i was at the time but uh it, i got you lessons at crunch and you never took them so i ended up taking them so but didn't you aren't you proud of me see this is what i get all along, she was saying to me, "Hey, I, you, you never work out. You never work out. And and now that I'm working out, is there any like good, Alex? I'm so happy you're I, doing every that. Every day, I say I'm glad you're doing it, but you don't stop talking about it. I mean, I didn't stop talking about it. Listen to him. I rest my case. I just tell you how I did that day at the gym, and I don't go every day now. I'm going every other day. Between that and his illnesses, and his tumors, I don't have any tumors. Oh, you will." Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's well, one the, grow, the, There's one growing there the, the somewhere. Only thing bothering me are these uh, these numb feet. You know, that sometimes they hurt and sometimes they don't. Alex, I live with that every day. By the way, that guy called me up and said, "Take that vitamin." Made him worse. You told me that. It made him worse. Made him hurt worse. Throw him out. Throw yeah. the stuff out. Yeah. Well, that also gabapentin, which my doctor gave me, it started hurting, and I called him and said, "It's hurting me when I use it. It hurts Wait more." Wait till you see the neurologist. And he said to me, "Well, then stop taking." Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to call a doctor for that. And then, but I'm afraid the neurologist will just say, "Hey, if you can't, if you can't." use gabapentin uh, this stuff won't work or that stuff won't work and we'll I'll, operate and i'll be in pain for we'll the rest operate of my life. and numb and and cut the nerves so you'll have no feeling in your feet no and you i just want, be able to walk. i just want my feet to feel good so if we go to europe i can walk around I, you know God, I, when we went to europe i couldn't walk around remember you couldn't yeah. you were on crutches yeah well, you were I, I bought crutches in in uh siena in siena we probably should have bought them in lords <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm just worried that when, like, you remember in China, we went up this these to see these rice patties. 
And we walked, both how, of us. How many steps do you feel? It was a was? lot. It was like a mountain. It was at least a thousand steps, oh. if not more. You could have paid to have two people take you, you up. Yeah, they actually had people that would put you in this little seat seat carriage with poles and each and one you lie down in it you sit and then they take you up the stairs for like uh, 25 bucks whatever uh, i mean and you walked you were a champ yeah. and we ate lunch at the top remember yeah yeah i got all the way to the top of it and uh then we had to come down <laughs> well coming down wasn't that difficult you know uh but uh it when i looked back and saw how far we went i went Wow. I'm pretty proud of myself. Oh, good. I like where we went to the place where you want to die. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 let me, let me. Let, this is where Alex wants to die. Let me explain this to people. I wish I could show the video right now. Of it. Well, go to the website and yeah. there's the video. Well, uh, yeah, on Roku, we have the, the uh, Chinese uh, trip and you can find it elsewhere. It's also on YouTube. And it's well. also on your website, isn't it? No, oh. no, it's on YouTube. No. Uh, but it, it, it was a, I had seen these these beautiful, just these beautiful mountains. It's kind of like how do we describe them? They're not exactly mountains. They're, they are mountains. They call them casks, is what they call them. It's what they're referred to as, and they're kind of like pointy. And well, they're they're I think they're lime yeah. and. The weather over centuries have just made these incredible formations. They're just yeah, and so beautiful. everywhere you go for miles down the Lee River on either side of you is just is, one after and another. And I saw photographs of this place, and I Alex said, says, "That's right, that's, I want to die." I said, "If I ever know I'm going to die, I'm going to take a trip to China. I'm going to go to this place, and I'm going to die there." So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see it on the video if you go to if you go onto YouTube and look up Alex Bennett uh, China uh, trip. Uh, yeah, what was it called? Uh, 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 something uh, uh, pandas. Uh, oh well, cheap ass pandas. Cheap, or... cheap ass pandas and other souvenirs. I think it was called. But anyway, it's it, it, it's my uh, just put type in Alex Bennett. All these dived. Uh, Alex Bennett's China trip. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was, um, oh, so the part of it that we're talking about is we wind up in Gulin. This is before we get down to the Lee River where the casks are. Yeah, there's about an and hour, all this hour beauty ride. Is. But this is, the, this is the city you have to stay in. Right. And then you go get a boat, and then you travel down the Lee River, and you see all these wonderful things. But the first thing we see... <laughs> is just this horrible it's like the end of the river and it's all dried up and infested with garbage, garbage. And, and, and people and are walking in their bare feet trying, picking up. trying to pick up oysters or whatever, <laughs> whatever. for dinner it was, i'm saying like, this is where and, alex wants to die I, I have a i have a video of a guy passed out <laughs> you know and and uh she's going so this is where you want to go to die huh? <laughs> But then when we saw the Lee River. It was, it was beautiful. It was absolutely it was, beautiful. It's so awe-inspiring that after you do it, you can't believe you were there, you know. I'm going to go see the, um, the what are they called, the little, cat, the little statues? Oh, the, uh, the uh, uh, army. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, I forget the name. Yeah. Well. But what it was is they built this army of, of statues, thousands of them. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Maybe somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Um, That's where Shecky went to see it. Shecky went and saw those. He also, he took a, uh, a boat trip, because he loves boats, took a boat trip up the Yangtze. Well, that's where this is, isn't and it? And he said one morning he woke up, and he looked out his window, and there was this beautiful Yangtze River right in. It was this old town, this old, you know, with rotting wood homes and things like that and this pier and he looks out there and there's this old woman with her ass over the pier taking a dump into the <laughs> <hand seat. laughs> he said i i began to wonder if i had taken the right vacation when i when i did that so that's good that's good yeah uh but uh uh no i you know i mean uh a, but I, you know, I think I would still be happy to die there rather than in this, you know. Do I really want to die in Manhattan? 
pick a place. You know, like every time I pass Mount Sinai, because you know, whenever you go take the bus home uh, from downtown, the bus goes by Mount Sinai, and I go, nah, that's where I'm going to die. Probably. You know, the chances are good that that's where I'm going to die, and I would rather I die out there in Gulen. Even with that guy who was passed out, maybe he was dead. At least he get to, got to die in Gulen. Yeah. You know, mm. people don't understand how beautiful this country China is. Well, and and we only saw a little section of it. We, saw, we so saw a couple. We saw saw a, a bit of it more than most people. See. But I mean, it's so big and so the, it changes. It's what twice the size of the United States. I mean, it's the, huge. The history yeah. is amazing, and and. The Great Wall of China, uh, you know. You can see from the space station. Yeah, but I mean, it's just wonderful. It's amazing. Don't try walking up the stairs. You did, and you even got out of breath, yeah, right? Yeah, it's hard. Um, I, in fact, I, I can't figure out in the old days when they said, uh, uh, Corporal so-and-so, I want you to take a message to so-and-so, and he had to walk up all these steps, you know. And at the top of every step is a station. There's a station, then there's another amount of time, and That's then there's Trump another station. Trump wants to build. <laughs> hey, the Chinese built it, and it didn't keep the invaders out. Yeah. It's amazing what a liar he is. <laughs> On every everything that he talks well, well, about. Well, the best it. one I mentioned this last night to Phil was the um, uh, that uh, he said that. He got a call from U.S. Steel, the head of U.S. Oh, Steel, right. who said he was going to build seven new U.S. Steel plants. Right. And um, when asked by the news people, the head of U.S. Steel said, the only time we ever announce we're going to build something, we do a tweet about it. And we're not building seven new places. We're reopening one furnace or something <laughs> like that. But he said, I don't know where he got the idea that we were opening up seven of them. Well, he's a big mouth. No, he's a, he's delusional. He is, he is. He's absolutely fucking delusional. And he has taken over the Republican Party, and he's taken over this country. Yeah, yeah. He has a chance to put in two or three more Supremes. That's really scary. Yeah, like Diana Ross, and Flo, <laughs> Flo Ballard is dead. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, you it's know. time for me to roll. No, wait a minute. Tell me, I'm no, stay, over. stay where you are first, but, uh, because I, want to talk. I just want to mention something else. We were just watching. If, if you ever get a chance, they're on Netflix. Watch uh, Anthony Bourdain's show. He, his writing, the writing on those shows are spectacular, and he did Italy, and he did Rome. He did, he did Rome. He did Rome, and he, and, but he didn't do Rome in the normal he way. He did the outskirts of Rome. No, but also. The crux of his subject was Mussolini, <laughs> and it was like he was constantly comparing Mussolini to Trump, which yeah. I've talked about. In fact, his motto when he was running for election was, make, make Italy great again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what happened there. Okay, you want to, you want, you wants to roll over. I Hold wants to second. roll over. You know, like, here like, she like comes. we did the other night. Here she comes. Here she comes. Here See, she comes. she's between two, two uh, hair. There, there, there we, we go. go. Oh, my, my hat is, you know, like when those guys with those suits. What? Look at my hat. It's like, it's like uh, too much hat. It's too much hat. I'm wearing the hat. Let me open up the uh, phone yes. lines here so that people can call us. As we did our wonderful documentary tonight on China and other places. Really, go but, see it. It's it's quite extraordinary, and he's really a good little filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I haven't done one of those. I don't know what I'm going to do next time because I don't have any really. I have to go out and spend about two grand before we go on the next vacation and buy myself a uh, 4K camera. Because I mean, I w I'd do it with the uh, GoPro, and some stuff I would do with the GoPro, but I wouldn't want to shoot the whole thing with the GoPro because I can't frame. Hey, as well. Jack! What is what is Jack doing? Calling so early? There he uh, is. And 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 we Jack. And we only see your chin. And all we see is your chin, Jack. Well, let me adjust my camera. See yeah. how I was playing. Whoops! Uh, that, I don't want to do that. There you go. Hi, Jack. Hello there. I just wanted to say it was a delight hearing you talk about the old 
fart there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me show them your picture. There you uh, are. That there handsome is. guy. The, yes. old, the old fart. Well, yeah, you know, you're always going to be older than me. And he's definitely older than me. See there? There we go. But uh, uh, I heard you talking about my weather here. <laughs> yes. It was not 85 degrees. It was. Last night when I started the show. It was. It was 95 degrees. Wow. 95 At degrees. night? Wow. And it's 93 now. What does but your this is not an unusual. Course? This is our typical. Yeah. Oh, Wait a minute, hold on a second. Hold on you. a second. Oh, who who's who's calling us on the phone? This is Ray. Ray? This is Ray. Oh, okay, Ray. Yeah. Don't don't move your phone around a lot because you're making noise there. Ray, where are you calling from? Oh I am? Oh uh, I'm on the San Francisco Bay walking with the dog, but you know, there's no signal. I'll mute it. I'll mute my mic. Uh, no, you don't have to mute your mic. I wanna see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I'm what's his name? Well, you're doing this on a cell phone, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and so it's don't wind. you don't you have a camera in that cell phone? Are you calling us using Skype? No, I just use your phone number because when I come out here, the signal goes away. Oh, ah. I see. Oh, okay. Have so you I'm using a regular cell signal? Have you called before the show before, Ray? Yeah. It's Ray Renati. Oh, it's Ray Renati. Oh, it's, oh, it's oh, oh, dog. Oh, because I didn't recognize. You know what it is? I, the dementia is setting I, no, in. No, I didn't recognize the telephone number. <laughs> the dementia is okay, setting in. Okay. All it is is I'm a. Like, what's the, I was thinking. Why I was thinking? Why am I getting a rudimentary description of how to call the show? <laughs> no, no, it's just that I've never had you with your cell call us. And we without see you. without the video, see, so that, right. I've never done this. So I figured you were somebody new. Now here <laughs> is somebody new, Sandra Lazanaro. Are you there, Sandra? Can you hear us, Sandra? Sandra, I think they. She's called before. I know. I know. Hi, Sandra. And she is now. She's hung up. What does that little phone mean? That means she's not on right. Call now. back. Hey, look, I got to run. Got shy. Oh, oh, Why oh, do you have to run? I'm going to hear about the weather. Well, well, no, I wanted to talk about when I took my wife to San Francisco yeah. for the first time. Now, uh, Donna is from Oklahoma City, north yeah. of Dallas, about 200 miles. Yeah. And uh, uh, we'd been married, I guess, at that time about, oh, 10 years. And, you know, I don't have any living family, hardly, in San Francisco anymore. Mm -hmm. So, finally, I decided I would go home and see some folks before they died. You know how it is when, you know, you yep. get to that point in your life. And so, we decided we would go end of July, 1st of August, when it's blazing hot here. And I kept telling her, for months, pack a coat. <laughs> pack a coat. Coat. Pack a coat. What was that? Pack a coat. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. Hold he, on a second. He said, "Pack a coat." Wait a minute. So let's see. Like, let's okay. see if we can get to Sandra. We leave here on the second of August. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sandra, can you hear us? Sandra. Or as they say in cartoon land, calling Baranka, calling <laughs> Baranka. <laughs> See, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's Sandra's on now, but, but Sandra, you, can you hear us? Well, how do we know? See? She's not answering. Because her icon is so clear. Yeah. yeah her picture's clear. Turn on your mic. She could be muted Turn, and un not un have unmute. camera. She, unmute. She could be, yeah. Uh, uh, it... it, it we don't even know how to unmute. Maybe she's asleep. Know somebody new. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you there, Sandra? Can you hear us, Sandra? She can't tell. Tommy, can you hear me? No, uh, to see me. Uh, oh well, I'll get rid of her because that's a lost cause. Okay. So let me finish the story. Like, story. Bro, I got a show to put together. Oh, okay. so she packs oh come on. You prepare for I, that show. I, I Are you kidding this, me? I want to hear oh, this. Hell yes. I can't fly solo, you know, like you do. I'm not that I, smart. I want to hear the story. So you tell so her pack a coat. We, we leave here on a day where it's going to be 102 for the high. 
We get off the plane five and a half hours later at San Francisco International, because back then I'd spend money instead of going into Oakland. And uh, the high for the day has already happened at 64. For the first (laughs) time in years, I am wide awake in the middle of the day. (laughs) Now, this is before 9-11, and we're out in front of the concourse because Donna back then was a smoker and she'd been on a plane and she was about ready to have a nervous breakdown and kill me with her bare hands and she said oh it's cold out here and I said well you know did you pack a coat we've got the luggage out here just get your coat out and she said I didn't pack a coat and I said why the hell didn't you pack a coat she said well I saw all those movies with a net and and Tommy Sands, and it was always beaches and sunny. And I said, that's 500 miles away, you yucks. <laughs> she wouldn't listen to you. She would not listen, would not listen. And that evening, I wanted to take her out to Fisherman's Wharf. Mm-hmm. They had a fire coat first. And I had to find a store that we could go to between the airport and Fisherman's Wharf, and it had to be, you know, I wouldn't, I was not smart enough not to take her to an expensive store. And we had to buy her a coat. And and so she says to me, this is colder than Dallas ever gets. <laughs> and I said, no. yeah. This is the way it is in my hometown right. every night. Yeah. Now listen, she, yeah. I have a surprise for you tonight. For me? Yeah. When you go to turn the show, back, the station back on. No, no. He's changed things. <laughs> there's a new, en- there's a, there, there is a new encoder I'm testing. Why in the world, now, God, now, does he wait, have wait, to wait, wait, change Now, hold, hold on a second. All you have to do on this thing you better write this down. is go to the very bottom of the application. What's right? an application? The app. <laughs> the app. Okay. The app. Yes. And, and there's a button down there. There's the a, very bottom. You better write this down. On the left-hand side. All the, the way to the left si- on that, the bottom. Is that the, is that the side towards me or towards you? It's, it's the your side, left. To the, to the left <laughs> using your hands. Uh-huh. Left. Left. Oh, in other words, the hand I didn't use when I was a kid. Right. On the bottom, <laughs> on the very bottom, and there's the a little bottom. round circle that looks but, like a button. And it's on your left hand. And so all you know. have to do to get things going is click it. It's on the left-hand side, Uh-oh. at the bottom. At, at the, the bottom. bottom. I think I can remember that. Okay. You better write it down. And, and if you can, I'll be sitting here waiting for you to bumble around with it and help you if worse comes oh, to worse. Oh, bless you, kind sir. And then you turn on the uh, the, uh, 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 the the, uh, the playlist just like you always do. It's just huh? it's just you click one button, same as usual. What? Bill, why does he have to change things? Always take me two no, years. No, I'll tell you why. Because, <laughs> because they're discontinuing the program we were using, and I'm testing this new one. And I just thought I would have you try it. When you come back on Thursday, yep. we'll probably still have the old encoder there. But I'm testing the new one. Now you know what it is, Phil. Yeah. He's thinking if the colored guy can do it, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> No, it isn't the colored guy. It's the colored guy who doesn't know technology. The challenge. Yeah. Well, look, I made it to using uh, Word Perfect. I figured once I learned how to do that and answer my email, what the hell else did I That's need right. to know? I, I, thought you used, I, I was really copy paste was well, the big thing. Well, give, it a, give it a try, and if you're having any trouble, I will click it from here. And with okay? that, I'm saying good night. He's mm-hmm. still using WordStar and everyone. Netscape. <laughs> Goodbye there, dear. Bye-bye. She's a very lovely lady. What are you doing with her? What am I doing with her? No, the question is, what's she doing with me? That's right. Yeah, that's that's that's, right. that's the more important question. Good night, honey. Oh, uh, you see, you, you know, that's so lovely to uh, to have couples that you, still talk to do, each do other. You, do you know how couples like sometimes they dress alike? You know those those people. They kind of 
dress the same. Yeah, I know a few people that do. Same sweaters, things like that. The only way, the only thing we are that way is with our technology. We both mm. have, she got a new phone and a new iPad, so I had to get a new phone and a new iPad. Our iPads and our iPhones match each other. Well, uh, Dan, I thought it because you couldn't stand the fact that I had an iPhone X. No, that wasn't <laughs> it at all. I, it, was, uh, it, uh, it was just, I could change over to a new phone, and I could yeah. get any one of them that I want to, right? What well, do you think the old one of two of us who's, you know, the technical person. But I find that I have far less trouble with a Mac than no. I have PCs. Yeah. But she won't let me have a Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well can can I make a suggestion? Is that you uh, give this the old phone to Larry Brown mm -hmm. and get him set up on? Uh, well, that's what I thought about doing. However, however, and I'm and it would be a really good one. It's a you know it's a it's iPhone plus, six right. plus, uh, but. Uh, I mentioned before that I would give him an iPhone. I had another iPhone I was going to give him. If he would just go down, one, if he just one. go down to AT and T, check in with them, and see how much it would cost to, you know, to, if he, he doesn't would, need an unlimited plan for one day a week. No, but he, no. What I'm saying that isn't the point. He's got to get it. He's got to get a service turned on. You know, and he, I have another s suggestion. He should do the show from Starbucks. They won't throw him out. Uh, he can use the bathroom, yeah. and he can use their Wi-Fi yeah. free. But, you know, and I'm thinking of giving my other iPad maybe to Shecky. I'm, I don't know what to do with the iPad. The iPad I have is the more expensive iPad, but it's old. It's an Air. The one they, gave, the one they, gave, the one they gave me as part of their, their offer, uh, which was like $100 if I wanted to take the 64K, but I wanted the 256 so it was $200. Is the is the six hundred dollar iPad they have out now, which is better, much better than the one I had. So I'm very happy with it. A couple of years ago, I, I re up my AT and T at the business, and they gave me not an iPad. It was some other brand of of thing, uh, and it was nineteen dollars. A small uh, one, a small, small one. Small. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I have that. I have that. Mar yeah. Marjorie got it from AT and T for free. No, it was uh, it was a it's a Samsung. I think the one I have. I, I'm not sure, but yeah. uh, even that would work for. Uh, but I but yeah. I wanted it because uh, I test uh, the. Uh, we actually do have folks a Google app uh, for the Great American Broadcast Network. That's what you go to in, in the Google Store. And there are all our shows, the latest episodes, uh, and mm -hmm. you also click another thing, and you get the live feed. So, I see. I was talking to a guy that used to be my news director at one of the stations I managed. Yeah. I talked to him, uh, I guess it was yesterday, and you're talking about people who are not technical? Yeah. This hold guy on, is hold on, folks. Around. You're going to see something, but I want to... I want to do something, okay? Okay. So the, this the, guy is walking around with a twenty-year-old flip phone. Yeah. And will not get rid of it. I didn't know that they still work because those are analog. They, they have, by the way, years? by the way, they are making the flip phones again. Yeah. And but they're making them differently than the old ones. The new flip phones it have a flexible panel, video panel. So that when you flip it open, the full width is your 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 video. You know, is, is your picture. Yeah. Uh, your screen. Yeah, but it's a flexible. It's a flexible screen. So uh, and it's a flip phone. So if it's a flexible screen, uh, what is it like? Those uh, old uh, LCDs, I think. No, I don't know what the material is, but it's a new material. It's a, oh. a, a new material that is bendable. So you can bend it in half, and it doesn't matter, you know. Well, you know who's bendable? I went to the Rolfer today. Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. Let's finish talking with Jack because uh -oh. he's got because no, he's no, got to go. No. I want to hear about the Rolfer because uh -oh. anybody that can bring Phil Meyer pain, I want to send money to. Yeah. Let uh -oh. me tell you. Not only did he bring me pain, but I gave him one hundred and ten dollars to do it. And uh, uh, you know, while they're doing it, I'm begging. I'm having a religious experience. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Hey, give me a break. How about a glass of water? Stop. It hurts. 
Right. And if you want that kind of pain, I, I know some guys up in the Bronx. I'm sure you do. <laughs> who all you who will do it for free. All you have to do is tell them what you think about Trump. Yeah. Well, I as soon as he was done, it feels great. But yeah. while they're doing it, I oh, you know, I I couldn't believe you know how much how painful it is. And I I said. Does everybody, you know, wince and have this kind of pain? He says, no. Nah. He says, I learned how to do this in Germany. So <laughs> I spent well, 11 years. Everybody that I have ever known that has gone in for Rolfing, including the three minutes that I tried, yeah, was calling out a lot of names of a lot of people. Right. Asking oh, I, for mercy. I, I, I did Rolfing on uh, more than one occasion, I believe. I, knew, I had a new person who did Rolfing, and I yeah. loved it. I just loved it. Well, I yeah. love it afterwards. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel good. Uh, I, you know, before I started going to him, I felt like my whole body was full of inflammation, and that could have been due to the heart thing. Oh, that also could be due to the fact that you're fat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, Bennett, I heard you talking about your exercising. Good for you. Oh, uh, Mr. Alex. Oh, don't, yeah. don't say good for me. It's the stupidest fucking thing I've started doing. Oh, no, no, you, you know. And you know I, something? I, 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 I'm not losing weight. I've gained a little bit. How much tension? And do somebody you put says on to me bike? that it's muscle weight. Is what I know, but how, how much tension do you put on the uh, on the on the bike wheel when you're uh, pedaling? I'm up to about four. Oh, okay. Yeah, I start and out when I start out. Bike. I just start out with one, and then throughout the thing, I up it and keep upping it until. In the last uh, ten minutes today, I was up to a four. You know. Hey, Alex. Yes. Alex, I have a good reason for you to stop exercising. Why? Um, I, I read this study where people. Oh, you cut out. You cut out on us. We, oh, you can't hear me. No, no, no we, hear me? Okay. Hey, go ahead. Oh, yeah, the pe people who run regularly. Uh, they live an average of two years longer than everybody else, but they spend about two years of their life running. Well, that's exactly the point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby Slayton used to have a so joke, just, a joke to that effect, and he said, "You know, I read that you uh, that running will put two years on your life." He says, "But you know what you do for those two years? You're fucking running." You know. <laughs> Hey, remember Ewell Gibbons, the guy yeah, that exactly. said, eat the wild hickory nuts, and what did he die of? Right. Stomach cancer. So, you know, something's going to get you. You remember the guy, they used to have a thing called prevention. Ever eat a pine tree? It, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they had a thing called the Prevention Magazine. Oh, yeah. And I they, used to get that. And, and the guy was, who was the head of it, the editor of it, was on the, uh, on the um, uh, Cabot Show. And the reason I remember this story is I had a friend who was also on that same Cabot Show. His name was Marshall Efron. And he was oh, on the show. Was and he a, a commentator. M no. Well, Marshall Efron, didn't he do something? No, he's was a, it 60 Minutes? Or, no, or? no, 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 no. That's a different he, guy? No, he was a comedian. Comedian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Character actor. Yeah. And um, he was on the show first. And then they bring out this guy as the head of Prevention Magazine, who then proceeds to tell Cabot how if you live a good life and you eat nuts and berries and blah, 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 you'll live forever. And then all of a sudden there's a pause and he starts gurgling, oh, oh, keels, keels over and dies. On air? On air. Now the Man, show wasn't live. It, the show wasn't live. It was pre-recorded. But as oh. my friend Marshall Efron said, they then decided because the guy died on the air, they didn't want to show that, so they dumped the whole episode. And he mm. said, I've never been asked back. Mm. So He's his a big break to be on the Cavett show was just absolutely thrown asunder by a guy dropping dead right in front of him. Do you remember KFOG in San Francisco? Yeah. Sure. Not that was the classic. Uh, still here. It's still here. Yeah, yeah but not under its uh, its uh, current. Uh, Wasn't walk. it? Uh, was it oh, classic right, right. for a while? It well, when when I was there for about three months, it was easy listening. Yeah. And uh, I worked weekends because I was still in college, yeah. and uh, we had an overnight guy who committed suicide on the air. Really. And. Yeah. 
he started the tune as I leave you softly. I think it's Matt Monroe or you know uh, softly as I leave you is the song. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, softly as I leave you. And when he did that, he blew his brains out in the studio. Mm. Hmm. Hey Jack, I remember that. That's what K Fog was. Oh, they play the blow the foghorn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, this is K Fog. I remember that story. I remember I, I was so doing he, that. I was he like, literally blew, blew his brains out over the format, huh? Have you well, ever worked that? Did, have you ever worked that a a, country station? Have you ever worked that kind of format? No, that's why you, he blew you his blow brains your out. brains out too. Yeah, my, it wasn't my, that bad. My father used to refer to that music as flapjack music. Uh, the reason what, he called what, it flapjack was, music, yeah. it was all that that you know Andre Castellanos and crap yeah. like that. And my father used to work on a show playing violin in an orchestra in which they pay, played that exact kind of music, and it was called the Albers Flapjack Hour. So my father used to refer to it as flapjack music. And I well, your dad was a pretty hit and, music. And for just a short time, I worked at KGMS in Sacramento, which was good music. And you have no idea how often you had to say the same phrase over and over again, and it made you sick. In the air everywhere over Sacramento. Oh, they stole that from cable. Well, yeah, who probably stole it from somewhere else. Yeah. You know, in the I, air, uh, I everywhere with, over uh, San Francisco, it's KBL. Ding, ding, ding. I worked with the guy who um, put cable on the air from McClendon. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was group program director for uh, McClendon Station for years, and he hired the guy that inspired me to get into radio. He hired me. You mean Don, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, that guy. Jeez. Uh, uh, you know, was, was was Don Keyes. Don Keyes. Don Keyes. That's Don right. Keyes hired me. You know, was, there I, sale, was there a sales guy there named Peter January? At Cable? Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. We, don't, we don't pay attention to the sales the, people. It was in the 70s? Fuck it. We don't pay attention to the sales people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. but, I, but I worked with Don Keyes in the early 2000s. Yeah, this is really interesting to people. I want you to know that. Well, yeah, you know, we're just going down memory lane because we're old farts. No, and we got, I, you know, I, I prefer not to even remember radio. Well, I like to remember the people that I met, like you. That's it. You meet anybody. You and people like you. Ten. I can't think of that many people I met in radio that I ever liked. They were all hacks. Well, it is a business of hacks. That's why I never. You're the. You are one of about three broadcasting people that I consider to be friends. Really? Yeah, because the rest of them are a bunch of assholes. Well, you haven't known me long enough, so hold off on that judgment. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, 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 I judge you by the number of ex-wives you have. I see. Okay. One more than Trump. Is it one? Does he have one more than Trump? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, let's see. No, wait. Wait a minute. Trump's only been married three times, right? Yeah, I've been right. married four. Yeah, yeah. Alex, you know. Alex has current, one more than Trump. The current Mrs. Bennett is not an ex yet. So does that make me better than Trump in oh, your uh, eyes? Well, oh, well, uh, you said exes, not wives. So he's tied with Trump. Yeah. I've only been married twice, and, and well, never I've, divorced. In my life, I've had women who have been. By the way, where is everybody tonight? Hey, the calls have been off all this week. Well, no, they've been pretty uh, good for me. Uh, well, they they haven't liked me much, but that's because I don't have Phil Meyer coming. Back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, I can't mean, stay up that late. But, uh, yeah, it's old. So where are all the other people? Start calling, will you please? Anyway, um, you uh, weren't uh, arguing. I'm going to try to call, really? call him with Skype. Oh, 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 okay, he's going to call with Skype. He says. All right. Then we can then we can see him. Uh, As he exercises on the Golden Gate Bridge. Yes. <laughs> he didn't say he was on the Golden Gate Bridge, did he? No. Yeah. No. I thought he said that. No. No. I no. think he's just a going along the water somewhere. But why, I, would it, why would anybody in this day and age want to walk across the Golden Gate Bridge when they perfect they make perfectly good vehicles to go across the bridge on? It's cold there. Yeah, yeah but it's and the, it's a long way down. Do you know I've never walked across the Golden Gate Bridge? 
I, 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 I have ridden across it probably several hundred times, to- thousand yeah. times. Alex, it's safe for you now. They have they have suicide nets. Uh, those don't always work. You bounce off of them. Uh, you'll you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> here 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 comes Ray. He's he's out there. You there, Ray? I am here. I just don't have the video on. I thought maybe it would work better. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's so cool. Where, 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 are you? where are you, Ray? I'm on the Palo Alto Bay land. It's, it's beautiful out here right now. I can try to turn the video on if you want to see. It's yeah, sure. It's really gorgeous. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 by the way, we've been joined by Chris Ritter. Oh, wow. Oh, God, the wind. The wind, ah. the noise from the wind is is hell. Oh, uh, let me stop the let me stop the sound. Okay, and turn it turn yourself sideways so we get a nice panoramic view. There we go, and I see a seagull in back of him. Did you see the seagull? No. It, yeah. This is how wonderful our uh, our 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 citizen panel gets that we have pictures of seagull. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. Yes. That, where where is that exactly, Ray? Uh, he uh, said that's it, on the Baylands, Baylands uh, Nature Preserve in Palo Alto. Oh, okay, yeah. that's very. But I'll turn nice. the mic off because it's really windy yeah. out here. Okay. I'd show you guys Lake Louisville, but unfortunately, that they haven't uh, uh, put the uh, garbage back in it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway. Um, uh, Oh, there was something you were talking about last night, and I was beginning to think that if you keep talking about the things you talk about, no young person will ever want to listen to you. Sure. Because all your references were like old stuff, and do you remember? Uh, you probably remember the Albers Flapjack Hour. No, you know? I don't remember <laughs> the Albers Flapjack Hour. I was busy listening to other stuff back then. Like Honky, like Honky. what? Well, uh, you know, because I worked at KMPX, I listened to KMPX before I... No, no, I'm talking about when you were growing, when you were li- li- in, oh. when you're a little boy and you were listening in your room to your Super Emerson your yeah. Emerson radio. How'd you know it was an Emerson? They all were. I uh, thought it was a crystal radio. You know, one of those ones you make no, yourself. No, at no, no, no. We had them. They actually had real tubes in them and everything. Wasn't that technical? You, you know, I got to tell you. When I, when, of course, when we people don't know this, but Jack knows this. When I was growing up, you turn on your radio and then you had to wait about what forty-five seconds because it, it, ha- it had Easy. to warm up. Oh. It had to yeah. warm up. The tubes had to warm up and everything, and then all of a sudden it came on. So this is like. Many years later, and I'm in my I'm in my forties, and my girlfriend, for a birthday present, buys me an old cathedral radio, working cathedral <laughs> radio, tube, I've got several. tube radio, and I turn the thing on, and I go, oh fuck, it doesn't work, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it comes on, and I went, I forgot, you know, I had completely forgotten, because you know, all of a sudden every radio you turn it on, there it is. Mm-hmm. In fact, people forget radio. Just anything. In you just the sixties. I had a portable radio that was like a Zenith. That was, uh, you know, maybe that big. Yeah. Was it tr- it had tubes in it. Yeah, what? transoceanic. Probably. No. Yeah, but it had some tubes in it. Yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, I've got a transoceanic that uh, I got to figure out who I'm going to leave it to because they all go, what you, What are you doing that old radio, Grandpa? No, the transoceanic I had was a Grundig. Oh, Grundig is a big brand. Yeah. Very expensive brand of radio. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the Zenith was like AM, FM only. Yeah. Now, you see, this is the kind of stuff that if there were a 18-year-old trying to listen to this program, they'd go, what the fuck am I doing here? Well, 18-year-olds will talk about stuff from their youth when they get to be yeah. in their 40s. Uh, how, how, how old are you, Chris? 51. 51. So, you see, he, he doesn't even know what we're talking about. I, I read a book on old radio. <laughs> did, did, yeah. Oh, you read a book on old radio. Did did you did you ever hear of an Emerson radio? Yeah, there's some thrift stores in uh, Kansas that have a whole bunch of old radios. It's it's a bit of a history museum. Those hey, thrift Chris, stores. When, Chris yeah. when they were talking about old radios, did it mention Alex Bennett? He's hip. He's <laughs> hip and new. 
I was the picture. I was the picture on the cover. <laughs> I, uh, my grandmother listened to Bill Moen, so that's that guy's oh, wow. a hundred years older than you. I yeah, think. yeah. Well, I'll tell you. So anyway, uh, I, um, you know, they had Emersons, but you want to hear something now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. I bet you don't even know it, Jack. What's that? Sir? The first TV set I ever, we ever had. My parents went to, I can't remember where they went, Montgomery Ward, I can't remember where it was, and they bought a TV set. And the guy had to come in and put in a 20-foot tall aerial because we lived in Marin County where reception sure. really sucked, okay? And then they put the thing in, and I think the screen was maybe a 15-inch screen, something like you that, 14 that big? Yeah. That was pretty big for those years. And the name of the TV company, the set maker, was Traveler. Well, I don't remember Traveler, but I remember Crosley. Uh, do you remember a radio called the Munts? Munts, sure. Mad uh, Mad, uh, Mad Munts. Yeah, I, I asked. I was talking to this guy John Diagostino, who builds custom cars, mm -hmm. and I'm doing a job for him. And I had a radio called a, a Munts radio, and I asked him if he'd ever heard of it. And he says that uh, Mad Mad Munts is still alive. No, no. He'd be 105. No, that's what he said. Maybe there's uh, somebody else that's uh, using the. Maybe it's but, a, maybe uh, it's a is his son or something. But it could be. Now you know, Madman Munts also built automobiles. The Munts Jet. Munts Jet. Yeah. But here's the real test for Chris. Chris, you're 51 years old. Can you drive a stick shift? Yeah. All right. I can also strip a transmission, but uh, I did train on that before I got off of it. Yeah. But did you go to the B2 movement for that? No. <laughs> no, I think 93 was the last year I drove stick. I remember I remember when you bought when you bought sports cars, it was always considered to be day class A if you bought one with an automatic shift. And then I'll after a while, them. that was the only kind you could buy. Yeah. Yeah. Sports cars with with, you know, automatic shifts. Uh, it's almost impossible to buy a car in this country uh, outside of some subcompacts that don't have automatic transmissions. By the way, look at that sunset that we're, yeah. we're viewing. The car I had before the Toyota FJ yeah. was an Audi, and it had a six-speed transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, and It was standard transmission. And I swore, I loved, I loved it the day I bought it, but I swore after sitting in traffic that I would never buy a standard again. <laughs> you know, you know. Bumper to bumper, it's well. When you're, you know, when you're in your 30s, shifting gears is cool. Yeah. When you get to be in your 40s, your 60s. You say, hey, I don't want to do that. No, I haven't had a manual transmission for 25 years. Wow. Yeah, and that was only because I had an old Fiat I was keeping on the road because I like having a convertible. It's good for my tan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to bore Alex, but did you see the new Fiat's and the new uh, Alfa Romeos that uh, that yep. they're importing now? Yeah, pretty slick, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. expensive. Man, going to be more expensive because of the tariffs. Yeah, well, Italian steel. They make them from Chinzano cans. Yeah, right. But uh, uh, no, no. But all I was going to say is, uh, uh, oh, and I'll tell you this: I had my the first tape recorder I ever owned was given to me by my uncle, and he had mm. bought a tape recorder. Now that wasn't the first recorder I ever saw. The first recorder I ever saw was my father had this one guy in their orchestra who bought this recorder, and he could record the radio shows that they did. Okay, in those days, in order to plug into a, in, in order to record on a recorder from a radio, you would simply take alligator clips and put them on each of the speaker leads, and mm -hmm. then run that into the into the audio, and that would be your audio input. Anyway, he would record the show, the orchestra, and he said, "I recorded the orchestra," and he brought the machine over and played it, and it was a wire recorder. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ever see a paper recorder? Yes. That's the next story I have to tell you. So, my uncle, okay, my uncle uh, had a tape recorder. He bought one of the first consumer tape recorders made. 
Uh, and in fact, it was only one track, and it was in the center of the tape. It wasn't two tracks. All right. And um, he gave it to me, and I had a reel of tape, and it was paper. Wow. Paper tape. And I, uh, but, but, but I went out and I bought some, and it was a brush sound mirror is Hmm. what it was called. Uh, and that was probably one of the first home consumer tape recorders. And I could, I then went out and got plastic tape and ran it through there. You could do that too. But the audio was not compatible with anything else that came after it because they then had like, they did two tracks, so you could turn the tape over and record on the other side well, I'm, and I'm, have I'm more room. I'm looking at eBay, mm-hmm. and there's a vintage magnetic paper recording tape, a circa 1946. Yeah, it's about just a, a roll, yeah. Just a reel, 70 bucks. A reel of the tape. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. thing was that it, the problem with the paper tape was is it had surface noise. It had a lot of hiss. But uh, the brand is Ampex. Yes, uh, it may have been Ampex. It could yeah. well have been Ampex. Uh, hmm. You know. Uh, well, you know who was responsible for introducing America to tape recorders? Bing Crosby. That's right. Yeah, well, actually, what happened, here's the story, if you want the full story. And now uh, the rest of the story. No, from there, the was, there was this guy who was in World War II, and they did a reconnaissance into Germany. Because it seemed as though Hitler was giving speeches, and they sounded alive, but they knew he wasn't in the place the speeches were being given at the time, and they couldn't figure out how he was doing it. So they attacked a radio station inside Germany, and they found these machines. And the Germans had had invented tape recording. And so they brought back about five of these things uh, back to the government to look at them, and this guy kept one of them and took it back to Redwood City and then uh, reverse engineered it to find out how it worked and how he could make one, and he took that basic template and built his own tape recorder, and uh, now what's he gonna do with it? So he goes down to Hollywood and he gets a hold of Crosby, and he says, look, how do you do your shows? Because Crosby never liked to do his shows live. He liked to do his shows recorded. And he said, well, like we always do them, we record them on lacquer discs, and we do it on several discs, you know, and then we take them and kind of edit the shows by mixing and matching the discs into a final master by playing, playing some back and then another one and then another one you can get what I'm saying. And this guy said, how long does that take? He says, it takes him about three days to edit a show. He said, what if you put a line into the hotel across the street from the, uh, from the, from the radio station? I will record your show. You tell me after the show what edits you want, and I will have them ready for you in an hour. And Crosby says, you can't do that. He said, give me a try. So Crosby said, fine. So they did it. He comes over to the hotel room about an hour later. The guy turns on the tape recorder, and there is the finished product. Because he was using tape. It was very easy. Just edit with scissors, right? Right. Uh, The first words out of Crosby's mouth were, how do I invest? (laughs) And he invested in Ampex. He was the major majority stockholder of Ampex. Bing was not too shabby when it came to figuring out how to make a buck. Yeah, he also, Minute Maid Orange Juice was his company, too. They're still around, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And and what was the baseball team? That, uh, no, that was, Cro- that was Hope that had Hope. Hope had it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't know Pebble Beach Paris. Golf Course, did he? What, what were you going to say, uh, Mr. Ritter? Bing. Bing Crosby had a piece of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and only about four years ago, they found this beautiful uh, 1962 World Series game that they didn't know was on tape, and they found it in his wife's mansion in Hillsborough. Mm. And it was, and they played it for everyone to watch. It was, it, he was yeah. the only guy who apparently had a copy, because he had a piece of the Pirates. 
But uh, this whole the whole story about how tape recorders wound up in America. I mean, they were invented by the Germans, and then, you know, rejiggered by this guy in Redwood City. Became one of the big Ampex. I don't think even exists anymore. Is that Bushnell? No, no Nolan Bushnell was uh, was was Paul was Atari. Was Atari. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Alex. Used to tease his dogs. When Ampex is still there. Yeah. Uh, they're still there. They still. Mr. their old tape equipment uh, that a lot of, that some TV stations use. Yeah. And, uh, and they sell like some software applications, and that's it. And they just have a few employees yeah. and a credit union, which I belong to, because my dad worked there for 20 years. Yeah, but it's not the company it once was, which oh, was. Oh no, no, no. Was no, no, I mean, yeah, they were the Microsoft of their time. Now I mean, just, like, I mean, people. you could go virtually into any radio station in the United States, and they all had several Ampexes sitting around. You know. Yeah, and and a lot of them are still running those machines. Oh, they were great. And and um, yeah, there was a big there was a big to do out here. They were going to tear down the sign, and the people of Redwood City you know, protested because it's like a historical monument now. Yeah. The station that I managed, they had a a closet full of old equipment. And I couldn't get my stepson to show up with his pickup truck so we could steal the Ampex recorder that we had. Really? Yeah, he wouldn't come down to Dallas and help the old man take it out the back door. By the way, Chris, you live in Las Vegas, right? Most of the time. And I watch this show that, I don't know, I just, this is one of my guilty pleasures, if you don't mind me mentioning it, because we all have things that, Really, we shouldn't admit to, but we do. But it's one of my favorite shows on television, and that's Pawn Stars. Uh-huh. Oh, and, yeah. And they're in Las Vegas. And they just did a show last night because the old man died. Yep. Yeah. And they did a tribute to him. Uh, this guy's had this pawn shop for, what, 40 years, something like no. that? No, I don't think so. Uh, no, about 40 years, they said on the show. Nope. Uh, because the son started it and hired the no, dad. No, the son didn't hi- start it. They did the whole story last night. The father oh, started yeah. it. The father right. started it. Yeah. And Alex, I hate to tell you this, the old man. 77. Think, yeah. 77. 77? No, it, no it, it said the years, 1941 to just well, maybe, the, the well, other maybe day. Maybe the grandfather started but the old man was 77. Yeah, the yeah. old man was the 77. grandfather was in the Navy. No, he was in the Navy, too. Oh, the the old man. The, old, oh. the guy they call the old man, yeah. Yeah. They started uh, a clear- a, guy. Well, it, if I had to listen to my old man, I'd have been in the Navy because he was in the They Navy. started calling him the old man when he was 38, <laughs> which I beat him like out. They started with me when I was 32. Anyway, um, but... Um, I, I, I was just wondering if you if you know the pawn shop there. Is it... Uh, uh, I don't know those guys, but yeah, they're really famous, and a lot of magicians I know they try to get on the show for publicity. Yeah. But there's there are so many pawn shops. Every residential part of the the, the town, every section has a, a super pawn. I mean, they're uh, Chris, I've never seen it's called Gold and Silver, I think, uh, is the name of it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I think it's close to downtown. They have tour buses go by. They they wave at them. They they drop them off there. They go in. It's a whole kickback People business. Have told They're them. rock stars. Yeah, it's very narrow and very small. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of side streets, one-way streets, and they do a booming but, business. But what they did there. is they. It, what was so smart about that show is they just did it. What it is, it's a low-rent antiques road show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's it just it's a pawn shop, and here people bring things in. But it's just it's as fascinating. As uh, Antiques Roadshow, and in some ways, I like it better because it's faster moving. Yeah, more you know? contemporary stuff. And yeah, I mean, you know, things like slot machines and shit like that. You know, yeah. where over over at Antiques Roadshow, they're bringing in Grandma's brooch. You know, mm. uh, but well, uh, the British are so much more genteel than we colonials. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is they get the experts to come in. Yeah. And, uh, hey, you know, I don't know enough about this. Uh, they know nothing. They know nothing because every time somebody brings something in, they go, I have a friend across town. I will, I'll bring him in to look at this and do an Especially estimate on it. Especially if they want more than 50 bucks for it. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Hey, we haven't said good evening to my brother. Well, wait a minute. What happened? What, ha what, what happened to your Jeff's light, backlit. Chris? What happened to your light? He, he just got backlit. <laughs> he needs to turn a light on. Quick. Mm. Get the lighting crew in. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so it, it should really, uh, you know, it's, um, I, um, I, I, I've loved uh uh, I love that show. I, you know, I have little guilty pleasures, you know, things you don't like watching that you don't want to admit to. Well, listen, I've got to go. Uh, but uh, to tell you how I am quickly moving forward in technology. Yeah. I just got myself a streaming device so I can stream Netflix. Oh, you Go mean like a Roku? Or? I got a Roku. Oh, you got yeah. a Roku. Well, you know you can watch GabNet on Roku. Well, that's the reason I got it. Yes, and there's, there's GabNet, and uh, you just look up Great American Broadcast, and uh, you can download the app. And then there's also GabNet TV. Can I watch it with the picture off? Can you watch it with the picture off? Yeah, I mean, there's some of these people I don't really want to see. No, but like the latest, sh uh, like Gabnet TV, I always post the latest show and things like that. You know, I'm just fritzing with you. Yeah, you but know? what I'm saying is, you know, you can hear all the shows. You can hear all, you see all your shows and hear all your shows, not see them. I can hear all my shows, and I, I'm having my tech guy come in here in a couple of weeks and see about getting me also. On video? On video. I would love you to do your show in video. I just would like to be around to see you do it. This will be the biggest clusterfuck in history. You know, because uh, well, well, one well, time I, one time you said I, to me, I want to do this thing in video, and I was thinking, I could barely tell him how to turn on the encoder. Ah, oh, fuck you and your opinion about me and my technical know-how. Yeah. I am now, if, tech, you know, I, somebody's your explanations. I, well, I did have a way that we could have done your show on video every night, but... Uh, I would have to do it. In other words, I would call you, and then I would broadcast on whatever. I have a technical minion or two that can talk me through this. Because, you know, you're, probably, you're, you're not really good about explaining things, and plus you're impatient what do you with mean? people. Well, uh, it, 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 I defy anybody to go through trying to get you to get into something technical. He's and not literally heroes. lose their fucking mind. I will have the 16-year-olds come in here. I am waiting for that first video you do that goes well, live you over what, YouTube. You show up with the rubber chicken if I don't get it done. Okay. All right. You know. Uh, Meantime, the, yeah. I will go to the Red Hen and tell him he's a, he's a Republican. Yeah, you could do that, too. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. To anyway, you. get lost, uh, Jack. Go get yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, and the same to you and the camel you rode in go, on. Yeah, go prepare your We're show. Have a show, you know, give us a teaser as to what your topic is. And well, we, you know, we don't have topics. Well, you know, I, yeah, okay, you well, know, I kind of fly by the seat of whatever I'm wearing. So what the hell do you have to prepare? Well, yeah. I, like to, I like to have a stack of things to uh, talk about in case uh, it gets kind of uh, slow. Yeah, I, got a I stack am going to talk about uh, the uh, Stuttering John phone call. Uh, you guys have not heard about that. Stuttering yeah. John Melendez. Yes. Mm -hmm. Former Howard Stern Stuttering John. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, I got some thoughts about that. About in the upcoming uh, meeting with Putin and our president. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so when you leave now, we're going to talk about all those things. So by the time you get on, they're going to be stale. They're going to be stale as hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. In that case, I'll I'll talk about the fact that uh, I'm wearing new underwear tonight. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm wearing my, oh, my old underwear. man pants here. I got these things. Very charming. Yeah. Very charming. Yeah. Very derogated. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're comfy, you know, and when, as you get older, you want your comfort. Right, now, Jeff? Now, right, Jeff? Now, now, how high up are you wearing them? That's the real Oh, I'm test. just, I mean, they're, 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 they're down to my pubic line. 
or, or what See, used to be my pubic line because I'm not growing hair like I used to. Yeah, who who does? You know. Uh, All of a sudden, one day I notice I have no hair under my armpits. I, well, I have no hair on my legs anymore. So yeah, I don't have any hair on my legs anymore either. I and I, but I was never that hair suit. But oh, I was. Know. Oh, hey, look. You know, I, I was like uh, I should have been down in the boiler room of some ship. Stoking the yeah. The focus I was so hairy in my youth. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, listen, uh, go uh, go uh, go practice that your will. show. I know that uh, you guys, some of you guys, have testing. to practice. Testing. One, two, testing. As 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> there he goes. There goes uh, Jack. And by the way, if you're watching us right now and you're seeing a little doggy walking. That's because Ray is taking his evening constitutional, and he takes us along with him. And uh, we can see the sun going down, and it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, well, uh, you're very welcome. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, any, any, anyway, uh, oh, I'm going to sneeze here. Hello, Vernon Nunn. How are you? Okay. I don't know what that means, but it probably... I give you... I had to give you the I had to give you the little Morse code this this evening here, Alex. Yes, uh, that thing's always ready to go, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, and and you can you can do you could hold a whole conversation with Morse code, right? You're that good at it. Yeah. Uh, now, is that a speed bug or a key? It's an electronic key. Uh, yeah, electronic. I never got good. I never got good at uh, what they called uh, a semi-automatic keyer, which is what some people call a bug. Didn't they go clackety got, clack? Didn't they that. go clackety 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 clack? Now here's here's what here's what the paddles look like. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fancy fancy. If you push if you push this side, it goes. If you push this side, it goes. So by rocking your hand back and forth, you make dits and das. Oh, I see. Okay, it's not like the old uh, tap the thing down. Well, this one has a has a straight key next to it also. So if I wanted to, I could I could do the straight key. Oh, now, okay. This is the straight key. It's not hooked up to the keyer though. Yeah. Okay. Good. The keyer is a little electronic box that takes those those uh, contacts and converts them into the sounds. But I seem to remember in seeing old movies of like you know old telegraph people that they the things went clackety clackety clack they didn't make a, exactly a sound exactly like that. well they exactly. Used the old telegraph key thing. used uh it used electronic pulses going over the wires right. to energize uh solenoids and then the person who was reading it had to listen to the clicking clicking in order to uh disseminate or to, to detect the morse code right okay see i got it straight and we used to have, te have teletype machines and radio stations too. I remember that too. But yeah. yeah, them's the old days. Yeah, hams yeah. used to do. Uh, they still do uh, uh, radio teletype, but it's done through computers yeah. now. The computers yeah. actually generate the characters and hook them up to the radio and that kind of stuff. So, so anyway, At the clinic, you had an AP machine. It was in the next room. Oh yeah, yeah, in the old radio station. My first radio station, I think I told you this, Alex, my, my first experience at a local radio station when I was in college, I was known as the None of That Computer because they did a show every night called Voice Your Choice, and this one disc jockey would play new records, and then he would say, okay, uh, you guys uh, call in now, tell us which one you like the best, and I was answering the phones as fast as I could answer the phones and marking down the votes, and then... With before the next record, after he said, "Okay, that's it. We're going to tally the votes." Before the next record was finished, I was in the studio with the numbers. Wow! Yeah, I, re I remember that kind of show. Uh, every town had one. Yeah, they also had a swap shop. Uh, and uh, you remember the uh, WMCA had the uh, top 100, or the, uh, the countdown. It was it was a big deal. The the uh, MCA WMCA countdown well that was because the survey was coming out yeah the survey right i have some pictures here of some of those surveys with me on them really yeah yeah i don't know where I, I, you know if it weren't for the internet i would have lost my entire history you know every now and then i'll go online and somebody's got some interview i did way back when you know that i thought i would never ever hear again 
Yes. Oh. My friend Barry, when we were kids, used to record WMCA on a reel-to-reel, and he's got all of those tapes. And I asked him if he had any of yours, and he says it's going to be hard to find, but if he comes across it, yeah. he'll... Yeah. Well, anyway, Again. let's uh, let's uh, do a little talking here about what's what's going on uh, lately. You know what I what uh, a thought that hit me today. I was, I had on uh, uh, the news channels because they're right next to each other. You know, on my cable system, there's like CNN, and then there's uh, uh, CNBC. That's uh, you know for financial. And then there's MSNBC, followed by uh, 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 what do you call it? Bex. Outfit. What's it called? Yeah. The, the the blaze. No, the blaze. Blaze. Yeah. And that's followed by Newsmax, and that's followed by OEC or some kind of news oh operation, God. and then uh, that's followed by the Bi- Fox Business Channel, which I can't get because I, I I get it. I mean, I receive it, but I don't get what they're about because they say it's the Fox Business Channel, and every time I tune in, they're talking about the news. It's Maria Bartolomo. Bar- Bartolomo, yeah, but they're not dealing with finances. It's not like they're sitting there constantly. Like you go to M- you go to CNBC and they're constantly talking about finances, but over at M- over at Fox Business, half the time they're talking about politics. Yeah, well, well Garfoyle, Kimberly, uh, what, what's her name that was married to uh, the mayor of San Francisco? Uh, she's uh, she's on that show. Uh, along with Maria Bartolomo. Bartolomo. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when she used to work on the stock floor? That yeah, they, used these, to, they, used uh, to, they used to call her the money, honey. Yeah, and what would happen is all the stockbrokers would bump bump up against her chest. <laughs> you know, they'd brush by her. Uh, it was, it was uh, an interesting thing yeah. to see in the morning. I interviewed her once. She came into uh, C- CNET when I was working there, and I interviewed her. And a nice, nice enough woman, you know. Mm-hmm. I was ashamed she had to go over to Fox and ruin her career, but you know, because she was much better suited to CNBC. Uh, but then, then right next to that is Fox. So I've got all these stations right next to each other. This clusterfuck of uh, I actually find myself watching Beck not because I agree with him, but because he is superbly his people are superbly entertaining. You know, uh, but the article I sent you this morning. Uh, which, which, the guy who blamed Trump for the shooting? Uh, yeah, he had to. Uh, he was over where was he? Was it CNN? Uh, it was uh, some major news outlet. Now I forget, but uh, yeah. So I read it at 5.30 this morning. Oh, look, there's a dog without a leash. I think we're in trouble now. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the Wild West out here. <laughs> <laughs> we got geese. We got wild dogs. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a feral dog right there. Don't let him go for your throat. I forgot my shit bag, though. I hope she doesn't go. Oh, it looks okay. like she's getting in the shitting position. She yeah. does. She's, she's sniffing around. Like <laughs> well, what she's sniffing. Oh, well. What do you? As soon as they start going in circles, well, you know it's it's all over. Yeah, well, what do you do? Yeah, but you haven't you haven't got a bag, so what are you going to do? Do you just pick it up and put it in your pocket? I mean, no, what do you do? Walk away quickly. <laughs> no, I make I make I, I make a recorder out of it. I use some stones and some dog shit, and yeah. then I can record like a paper recorder. Oh, it's wow. a really old style. It's an old style. Oh, look, there's like mosquitoes everywhere. Holy shit! Yeah. I gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's getting, Come on, fuck. It's getting to be dusk. That's mosquito time. Anyway, yeah, I'm uh, away so from them. anyway, I'm watching. I'm watching these channels. And especially the MSNBC and the, and the CNN, and uh, you know, it, 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 they don't even know yet who Trump is going to nominate for the Supreme Court. But already they're doing stories like, "There goes Roe versus Wade," you know, and and oh, there goes uh, this, and there goes that, and nobody even hey. knows who's going to well, be nominated a, yet. That's Everybody what was saying. Renee said no. that last night. Well, no, but it, it, it's kind of like me with uh, uh, with oh my PSA test. I don't just say, hey, my PSA is going to go up. I go, but then they're going to want to do a biopsy, and then there's going to be cancer, and then they're going to have to remove my prostate. Now, I haven't even gotten the PSA test back yet, but already I'm, I'm in my mind looking at the worst-case scenario. 
And they're all it's sitting around outs. going, there goes Ray, Roe versus Wade and, and all of that. And I'm going, first, let's see who he picks. Then we can start arguing about their qualifications and their history. And then maybe we can start worrying about what's going to happen to Roe versus Wade, which is going to be very hard because even people who are currently on the court would probably vote against doing away with it because it has been precedent for something like 40 years. So, And it was passed 7 to 2. It yes. was passed 7 to 2. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it has precedence. And even a, a staunch conservative would say, hey, I have to, I have to go with precedence here. We don't yeah, want you know, it. Yeah, overturn these decisions yeah. unless you find that it but, was unconstitutional but, in the first place. But, but let's say worse comes to worse, and they all vote. You know, uh, all vote against uh, it for repeal of Roe versus Wade or whatever. The fact of the matter is that uh, it's just too early to be having this wringing your hands discussion. Yeah, Trump said that he wasn't even going to ask the question up in New Jersey. He's going to be interviewing people, I guess, over the weekend. And uh, yeah, that's uh, a great the, place to find the next Supreme Court judge, Jersey. In between rounds of golf, that is. Yeah, in between yeah. rounds of golf. But uh, he says that uh, he's not even going to ask the question about Roe versus Wade. Well, he said he's not going to because he's been informed. Yeah. Okay, that that would not be wise of him to do. Uh, however, mm -hmm. when he was running for president. He said, the first thing I'm going to ask any nominee for the Supreme Court is, how do you feel about abortion? He did say that in a speech. Yeah, so, so I guess that's one of his promises that he's not going to. Uh, <laughs> well, we don't know whether he'll keep it or not. But uh, yes, uh, 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 Vernon. The story that I haven't heard is, you know, what would happen if Roe versus Wade was overturned? Abortions won't stop. It only means that rich people will only be the people who will be able to get them. Well, it, a part of the uh, the uh, uh, of what they were saying here was that the president could take the stance that even if the Supreme Court were to go against Roe versus Wade, individual states could mandate abortion. Uh, but then again, you'd have that thing about having to go across state lines to go get your abortion and things like that. And having one of these laws, which is state to state, state to state. I mean, I think all America should be f marijuana free, right? You know, rather than have to go to this state, but you can't take it to that state, but you can go to that state, you know. Wasn't it Kennedy that uh, pushed for states' rights, uh, Citizens United, and uh, a number of other uh, de decisions no. that the left don't like? No, yes, because was. citizens. Kennedy, it, yes. It, 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 which Kennedy? Ted. He wrote the majority. Anthony Kennedy wrote the ma majority decision on. Uh, citizens oh, oh Justice Kennedy. I, I'm, when yeah. you say Kennedy, the first thing I think of is JFK yeah. and a bullet uh, man. It's and then, uh, uh, Supreme Court Kennedy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's a conservative. Yeah, and uh, Trump. I guess they cut a deal, and uh, Gorsuch was uh, uh, one of Kennedy's. Um, uh, what do they call the guys that uh, uh, clerks? And uh, he's looking at uh, two others that were also Kennedy clerks, and that's what uh, why Kennedy decided that he would retire well, prior to the uh, eighteen uh, midterms. I think if I were president and I had to judge who I was going to put on the court, I would look at the person who's leaving, and then I would try and get someone who approximates that person's politics. Even if I was a conservative and, say, Ruth Bader Ginsburg retired, I would try to replace him with a liberal. I don't you think know. that's going to be No, but, the, uh, but that's what I, I would do to keep the balance on the court. I mean, do you really want a court that doesn't have some kind of balance? I mean, the great thing about this Supreme Court was it was half and half in Kennedy. And yeah. Kennedy could go either way. Kennedy would usually err on the side of conservatism, but when it came to Guantanamo Bay, for instance, he voted uh, uh, against what was happening to them down there. He's, he's, he's been a kind of a free thinker, and he's been literally the swing vote. Now yeah. we, won't, we won't have a swing vote. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, 
if he gets uh, one more conservative in, uh, any others that are going to come in after uh, the midterms, if they don't hold the Senate, uh, will most likely have to be uh, more liberal. You know, if you want to go passing uh, uh, constitutional amendments, how about the following constitutional amendment? Uh, a, a judge can only serve for 10 years. You know, why, why, do, why don't they have term limits? Uh, Why? Because they don't want to be unduly influenced. Yeah, but they won't be unduly influenced. In fact, if, if you if you have uh, term limits, they know exactly how long they're going to be there. They will get done what they have to do. But it doesn't mean that, like today, if we have a young court of conservatives there, and now Trump puts another conservative on there, we're going to have to live with this court for the next 40 years. I like that. Well, I know you like that, but you know I don't think it's good for the country. Do you, Jeff? How do you, Jeff's been quiet. Oh, sorry. sorry. Jeff's been quiet. Yeah. Uh, turn uh, you on, did, Jeff. Jeff, turn on the mic, Jeff. I don't think that I really have a position for either one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting that Kennedy really often is the guy who made the decisions. Yeah, that's why they called quite Kennedy. often. Yeah, because it was a five-four, and he was the one who, you know, became the five guy. He put W into office. Yeah, he voted he, for George W. Bush. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing is, though, here here's the thing. Everybody talks about, but we want to have a uh, we want to have a uh, uh, a court that uh, isn't ruled by their politics, and yet. He's trying to get conservatives in there. The fact is that these I think people. He's trying to get constitutionalists. Well, is what he's he, saying. No, but he wouldn't know a constitutionalist if it came and bit him in the well, ass. Not sure okay. People that are advising him do. Oh, the oh, Federalist is, is his, not necessarily a constitutional. I didn't uh, say Federalist. I, I said. No, you know, but that's the people who are putting together the list for him to pick from. Yeah, but he, he, he wants people that will uh, uh, judge from the Constitution, not try to make new law from uh, the bench. Well, what do you think about uh, uh, the Citizens United decision? Was that was that making new law or was that ruling that the Constitution? I don't uh, think a corporation is a person. And if, if I had my way, the next amendment to the Constitution would say just that. The, the, but the, the corporations are not years. people and money is not speech. Well, what right. happened was, well, hold on a second, hold on a second, uh, hold on a second. What yeah. happened was back in, I Maybe it was 1912. Right, some right. some lawyer with a penchant for just changing things up and making the corporations have it better for them went to court and got a decision that corporations were people. That's correct, and uh, and that has remained law for the longest time. I disagree because if a corporation does something bad, you don't can't put a corporation in jail. And corporations uh, don't die. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how you can have them have the same rights as people? Yeah, I'm well, they sorry. Can't vote. You know. Uh, but they can buy it. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, I think we should all remember that Roosevelt loaded the court. No, he tried to. Adding the number of judges. He tried oh, to, but they with, shot him down. With four terms, he, he was definitely, you know, most of these guys were going to get outlived. No, I mean, he tried to increase the number of judges on the Supreme Court. He did. You know? Oh, he did? Yeah, it he, used to be just six. Oh, really? Yeah. So that would always be a split court then if you... Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I, I think it was in the 30s or whatever he did this. Like, what I, I would I, like to see, no matter who Trump nominates for this position on the Supreme Court, I'd like to see whoever that person is, if they are professional, of course, that's the big if, to recuse themselves when it comes down to the Mueller investigation, uh, you know, uh, subpoenaing Trump or uh, indicting Trump, and it goes to the Supreme Court whether or not you can indict a sitting president, that person should recuse themselves. I think anybody who a was, in fact, put into that position by Trump should recuse themselves, and that would include yeah, Gorsuch as well. 
is a separate arm of the government. And the whole reason you give them lifetime appointments is so that they don't have to be beholding. Well, if you give them 10 years, they don't have to be beholden to anybody either. Clarence Thomas is beholding because his wife works for all these lobbyists. Let's get real. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, 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 well, yes, Chris. 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 Hi. Uh, doesn't uh, Justice Kennedy, uh, not Justice Kennedy, but doesn't his son, didn't his son have something to do with Deutsche Bank? And yep. didn't uh, Trump forgive Deutsche Bank like a huge debt that when U.S. banks wouldn't finance <coughs> the yes. Trump projects? Absolutely. So that's also a conflict of interest. Also, it seems curious to me, I don't know why this is, but from 1969 to 1992, uh, only Republican presidents were able to nominate Supreme Court justices, and they got 11 off in a row. Jimmy Carter didn't have the chance, so 11 in a row, and they still couldn't overturn Roe versus Wade. And uh, Well, you know what happens is there's, there's something that goes on once somebody becomes a member of the Supreme Court. They do have an independent. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's not because of the amount of time. It, it's because of, of the fact that it, it, the, all of a sudden they're in a position where they go, well, you know, I've been given a job here to interpret the Constitution. Maybe I got to be a little a little better about it, you know, rather Less than just political. vote my own brain. I have uh-huh. to go by the Constitution. I have to do right by the country. I have a service here. Good example of that was. Uh, when um, uh, uh, Warren, um, Earl Warren, Earl Warren was given uh, mm-hmm. made the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, they figured they were putting in a real conservative, and they were. The only thing was when he became Supreme Court Justice of the, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, he was very liberal. He, he suddenly felt a calling to do right by these things, and he became, uh, the conservatives hated him. I mean, you know, the John Birch Society was calling him a communist and everything else. And the guy was basically a conservative, but he was somebody who was so conservative that he believed his job was now to interpret the Constitution and to do right by the law. And so- The John Birch Society, thinks everybody is a communist. Yeah. And Kennedy, Kennedy, pretty much the same. They thought he would just vote conservative on everything. And Kennedy yeah. became the swing vote. So you don't know, Wait. and our current Chief Justice, uh, what's his name? Roberts. Uh, Roberts is has, got, has gotten a little feisty at times. He might be the swing guy he, now. he could be the swing guy. He could start becoming more and more the swing guy. You know, so, but... All I'm saying is, would MSNBC and CNN and all these other people, and even the ones who are cheering over at Fox, quit your cheering. Uh, oh, Roe versus Wade is gone. We're going to kill Roe versus Wade. Uh, and uh, uh, speaking of killing something, um, it, it, you know, it's just, it's embarrassing how they're jumping ahead five spaces before we know what's happening you know so i don't think that roe versus wade is definitely gone i think it's a long way from being gone and i don't know that the justices that are there would vote it uh, if somebody came to them with a case trying to get rid of roe versus wade if they either would even take the case or if they would even um uh, uh, uh they would probably go with precedent Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, that I, we, uh, I was talking about this morning, his name was Cox, and he was from Reuters. He was the head, uh, I think the head editor or something, yeah. uh, 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 from, uh, from Reuters. Yeah. A guy who said that uh, the shooting at the Capitol Gazette was due to Trump. And uh, he, he, now he apologized, he took down his, his post, uh, but... Um, uh, I'm just wondering, aren't they going to fire him like they did Roseanne? Well, I, uh, I, I, uh, I can go on record now as saying that I, I, I do blame Trump for what happened at the Capitol newspaper <laughs> shooting. You know, I, 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 I don't think the guy they should have apologized. I think, I think that in this atmosphere, Trump has given a sense of permission to certain people. 
I blame Facebook, and this whole thing started in 2013, I think. 11. 11? Okay. You blame Facebook? Uh, blame I, I, prefer, I prefer to blame Trump. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll blame Trump for a lot of stuff because I think Trump has given a sense of permission to people to do things. And even though he may not have said, go shoot these people, he then says horrible things about the press and how the, the fake news and all of that. And then all of a sudden somebody goes in with a shotgun and starts this guy, shooting. I had a vendetta. I know this he guy, had a vendetta, but he also had a sense of permission from the president of the United States. Yeah. Vernon, Trump if you couldn't get a parking space. Vernon, yes, I would. Vernon. Let's back back to the judiciary. Did you see today that uh, a federal judge appointed by a Republican president shot down the Kentucky governor's requirement that people receiving Medicaid in Kentucky had to work? The federal judge says that they did not have the HHS did not have the authority to grant that waiver. How in the world do you get Medicaid? have to work in order to get Medicaid if maybe what is wrong with you in the first place is no, something no, that... You get it if you're unemployed. If you don't have income and you're on... Uh, yeah. Not just this... If you're on disability, you get it. But if you're... Uh, there are a lot of reasons why you get it. I think you can get it. Medicaid, or, if I'm um, not mistaken, is the state-based Medicare. Am I, I think not, so. Yeah. You know, and it, it's available to people who fit certain needs yeah. okay one of those is income if they're very low income yeah, yeah. so i mean to say that they <laughs> you have to work they may work but they may be working so little they need medicaid right you know i mean uh, why can't we just be decent people and just give out of our hearts to people the things they need why so it's called medicaid uh, huh no it's uh, it, Medicaid. Kentucky had the most successful state-based uh, health care plan system in the country. It was a model. And we elected Governor Bevin, the last governor, in 2015. And the first thing he did was dismantle Kinect, which was the Kentucky uh, health care uh, website for signing up for, for insurance. Yeah. There was something else that got dismantled, and they said that that's why they this guy may have gotten away with what he did. The police in uh, in Annapolis said that they used to have a computer program available to them that would search Facebook and other social media things to identify uh, people that uh, you know uh, needed to be identified. And I guess that 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 they're no longer allowed to use that program. Uh, and I, the you know the the guy from uh, uh, the police department was saying what it was. I think it started with a G. Hmm. Uh, and they said that if they would have had that, they could have identified this guy earlier and seen uh, seen the threat. Well, it's what it could have, should have. You know, after all of these things, it's oh, hey, we we if we had known that that guy was this, or we knew about this guy, but we didn't follow up on it. You know. Um, Things fall through the cracks. Yeah, you know, it's the way things yeah, are. It's, it's on that, you know, uh, and, and and in this particular case, I mean, yeah, this guy was some kind of nutcase who uh, who had a, a vendetta against the newspaper. Yeah, uh, or at least that's what we expect. We don't know that much. He's not. Uh, to, he's not. He, was su he sued them. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on uh, a second. I'm, I, I, all I'm saying is he's not talking. He hasn't said a word to them. Yeah, uh, but he sued them, and he made many threats after uh, his case was uh, thrown out of court. Yeah, so I mean, you know, and and did they protect themselves at the newspaper against this guy? Uh, obviously not. He shot through the door, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when the police arrived within ninety seconds, they caught him hiding under a desk. Yeah, yeah, he was, and but he had smoke grenades and I'll, other things. I'll bet to, after you know after what happened, for instance, in um, in uh, uh, at like like uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Google. Uh, I'll bet every single tech company in the business now has very heavy security. You know, uh, after that Charlie Hebo in uh, in Paris, uh, you, you would think that there'd be more security. Yeah. Yeah, you know, 
Well, I mean, there is. But, I mean, it's just like we're getting to the point where it's such a secure world now that we won't be able to go anywhere without having to be frisked or go through metal detectors. And uh, it's, you know. Hey, you know, I, if that's the price you have to pay for safety, you know, this is a, it's not the world. Be I don't used. think, I don't think no matter what you do, you're going to stop it. I, I uh, just don't think. How you, come the inner city schools with metal detectors don't have these shootings where all of these other schools that are rural and rural communities, they're having these shootings. Yeah. Mass uh, yes, Ray. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I went over to um, PayPal the other day and uh, they have all these metal detectors and all kinds of security in the lobby. But if I had had a bomb before I even got through security, I could have killed uh, 50 people right there waiting to get through the security. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that, that it causes another issue when, yeah. there, when there's a lot of people waiting to get through security. Oh, you mean the, the, uh, the line, uh, the bottle? Yeah, line. yeah, in the well, lobby. Yeah, look look at the new technology the they got, this facial recognition technology. Uh, yeah. They're going to use it at the airports. Uh, and oh, okay. uh, you put your passport, and instead of using your passport, it's going to be uh, facial recognition. And I think they're trying it at a couple of different airports. And uh, okay. so, well, it's uh, supposed to uh, spin things well, up. Did. You know, I, I, it's funny. I remember I uh, when I was going to China, um, I, I went to the airport and I had to go through whatever. And for some reason, I was pulled aside because for some reason I had something on me or I didn't have something on me or whatever. And they were going to do the full body search on me. And they're doing the whole thing. And I'm go it's taken a long time. Uh, and um, finally, I looked over one of them and I said, Tell me, with all this that you're doing, uh, how many people have you caught? <laughs> and the guy said, oh, we've got some people with marijuana. I said, but that's not what you're here for. You're here to protect against bombs going on, on the planes, not some guy with a joint. Yeah, but we caught some people with marijuana. I said, that's not, that's, that's not what you're charged to do. I want yeah. to know how many people have you caught trying to board a plane with with a gun or with something like that? And the guy said, "I they just caught I, one. I never have." Yeah. Did you Did you see the gun in your waistband? What? They planted the gun in your waistband. Oh yeah, right. And then I didn't get to go to China. Right. Yeah. They did so steal my. They st they stole my cell phone. Really? Yes. And I had to go back and tell them they had my cell phone. Oh, is this yours? They didn't come trying to find me and say, you know, because they frisked me. They took everything out. I had to empty all my pockets, everything, you know. So yeah, uh, my, my girlfriend had a watch at the Oakland uh, TSA uh, checkpoint. Yeah. And uh, they, she put it in the little basket, and she walked away for a second and then remembered it's in the basket. She went back, and it wasn't there. And she refused to leave. It was a $1,800 Omega watch that I gave her. And one of those constellations. Mm -hmm. And uh, she refused to leave. And then they finally, it took 45 minutes till somebody came out and said, is this your watch? Try this one. I, uh, I, I, had, a t I had one of those serious portable radios, one of the first ones they came out with. Yeah. And uh, I, because I didn't want to take it on the plane with me because people would probably, they probably say, what is that? Blah, blah, blah. I put it in my suitcase, which was then locked with a TSA-approved lock because the TSA can open them, but nobody else can, right? I get to my destination. The radio isn't in there. I got, it got stolen from me by TSA. So who are the fucking crooks? Yeah, exactly. They, and I think they are. Uh, you know... Uh, my scuba uh, turn off turn off your audio uh, 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 uh yeah ray turn off your audio because it's a little loud oh sorry sorry yeah okay yeah you know uh, i was going to hawaii like every six weeks for a couple of years yeah and uh I, and uh, you know i was flying with my scuba equipment mm -hmm. and uh always there was never a time that it didn't get uh opened by tsa 
And then if uh, anything that I, the camera equipment that I would carry through, like underwater camera equipment mm -hmm. uh, and enclosures, you know, you would think going to Hawaii, they would know what those things are. It, it was like they've never seen that kind of equipment before in their lives. And you, know, you get four guys standing around a bag, uh, scratching their head, saying, what's that? It's underwater camera equipment. You know, and I'm going to Hawaii. Yeah. And, you know, they don't know. Yeah, fucking thieves. Uh, you, Kevin, you've been quiet tonight. I got a really crappy connection. I've been freezing up and everything else over here. No, you look. You've been. You haven't been freezing up on this end. No. Yeah, you've been, I've been. I've been. You guys have been locking up and everything else all night. Really? It's funny. You know that that one I can't figure out. You would think that if he was locking up, he would lock up here. But right. all night you've been uh, smooth. It's probably just my end. You you've been smooth as silk, and your well, audio's you know, terrific mm -hmm. and all that. Maybe. Other people are on his download, and he's uploading to us, and it's, uh, you know. That's my crappy connection. But I just, I, it could be upload is right. different Maybe than download. Knows. That could right. very well be. No, every once in a while, I'll get a little thing in the bottom there that says bad network connection. Really? Because yeah. you've been perfect all night. Claire is a bell. Smooth. Like the dog. Bad One network. of those nights. You know. Um, Vernon, I think, knows. Yes, Vernon. Well, I know so we're getting close to the end, and I just uh, I thought of Phil on Wednesday because I went and saw my chiropractor, uh -huh. and he he related to me that uh, that previous Friday he started having some problems. He'd been taking nitroglycerin, and he had started having some problems. Ended up going to the hospital. They put three stents in his heart, and he was home by Monday. Wow. So, and he was adjusting me on Wednesday. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Alex, if if I uh, drop dead, I won't call in on Thursday. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Your thing is until next Monday, right? When, uh, Wednesday. I think. Well, no, yeah. Thursday is. Let's see. The fifth is uh, the, the fifth the, Thursday or Wednesday? Yeah, fifth yeah. is Thursday. It's, it's Thursday. Thursday. So, if uh, if I drop dead and I don't call in on Friday, yeah, no why. Are you leaving me anything? Uh, I, yeah, I'll send you the, a good microphone. Oh, okay, good, good, <laughs> good. Because you know, from the grave. <laughs> I, I, you know, I I just want to be rooting for death. You know, and yeah. and I, you know, I like you too much to do it. But if I had some motivation, well, I'll, I'll tell Faye to send it to you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so so you're so we won't hear from you then on Thursday. Uh, maybe you know it, it depends. They may not keep me overnight. Uh, yeah. They said that, uh, you know, but on the other hand, they may crack me open and replace four uh, ventricles. So, uh, you know, I don't know what they're going to find. <clears throat> Do me a favor. Uh, call me. You know, you have my number. Yeah. You know, and let me know how you're doing, okay? Because I, okay. I really want to know. We're not on. Call, what? If I don't call, it's because I'm dead. <laughs> it, we're not on on Tuesday because I figured if we're going to take yeah. Wednesday off, why well, work Tuesday? Plus, it gives everybody a couple of days off, and I think that's kind of nice, too. Uh, it's our little summer respite, as it were. And uh, so, uh, everybody, if you don't hear us uh, 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 until next Thursday, please uh, don't feel bad about it, okay? Uh, we're, we're coming back. We're not, we're not off the air. Anyway, hey, thank you, good Phil. Luck, Phil. Have a good time. Hey, good thanks. luck, Phil. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate you. Uh, wherever you are, he's, I think, in a closet uh, somewhere. Now. See his thing. He put himself on mute. Yeah. You, yeah, where are you? Where are you? It's all dark. I'm almost home. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, it's, I'm, in, I'm almost home. You're almost home. Okay. I'm almost home. Well, we'll see you next Thursday, yeah. okay? Yeah. You too, Kevin. You too, Vernon. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Great Have having great you vacation. here. And, and uh, Chris, I'm always, sure. always a pleasure to have yeah. you there. Uh, a, a great, uh, nice, uh, happy citizen panel. Give them a big uh, wave goodbye, will you, so that they can uh, all see you. Okay, bye-bye. We'll see you next week. Uh, that's it. We are going to take off uh, until, uh, what is it, uh, uh, next uh, next Thursday. Uh, because it's, you know, it's a big holiday weekend. What are we going to do, you know? Uh, that's That's the way to handle it. Um, so uh, we'll be seeing you again next Thursday, okay? 
Uh, in the meantime, Jack's next with the uh, intersection. And that's followed at 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections. Uh, it's Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, next Thursday, uh, we'll come on right after Damien Chaplin and The Exchange. At 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.